In this video, we'll cover some of the popular built-in REST APIs on the platform to enable third-party apps to interact with data on our ServiceNow instance. Now, just a quick caveat, this video was recorded in the Rome release, so the APIs may have changed, or more likely, several more were added since this video was recorded. Just as with all videos in this series, we want you to understand the concepts so that we can apply them to other releases and business situations. We'll be using the REST API Explorer again, so if needed, check out the previous video in this series aptly titled, The REST API Explorer. In an earlier episode, we saw how we could import a spreadsheet using a data source, then use an import set and transform map to manipulate the data and place it in a target table. If you need a refresher, go back and watch the episodes on data sources. For this video, we're going to perform a similar operation, leveraging the work we already did. But instead of the data coming in from a spreadsheet, we're going to use a REST API. We'll start by opening the REST API Explorer. Then, going to the upper left and select our namespace and API. In this case, our namespace is already now, and we'll set the API to import set API. Below that, we can see three resources, two post and one get. Let's start with the first one to create a record in an import set staging table. Next, we'll put in the staging table name. We get this from the data source we built earlier. Once that's done, we go down to the request body builder and start picking fields and entering values. This is the same data and format from the spreadsheet using display values like names instead of sysids. After the fields are complete, we can test by clicking send, confirming we want to do this, and validate it worked with the 201 created message. The system then takes over and does exactly the same process with the import set and transform map to get the data into our target table, the communication devices. Let's copy that response body JSON because it's not uncommon as we start putting REST APIs together that the output of one request is useful to the next. We'll show you some techniques to automate this in the future videos, but for now, I'm going to save it in VS Code. But imagine it's stored in memory, a record, or someplace in the system we have access to. Now, if our goal was to have a third-party system send us the information, the REST API Explorer has pretty much everything we need on the screen, including code snippets, header values, and more, in order to build that integration. Of course, sending one record at a time may not be ideal for some situations, so there's a second post method to send multiple records to reduce the number of import sets created and make transformation quicker. Let's look at another quick example. This time we want to attach a signed PDF contract agreement to the phone record we just created. To do that, we'll switch to the Attachment API and select the post method Upload an Attachment from a Binary Request. On the right, we see there are three mandatory query parameters, table name, table sysid, and the file name. These directly map to the fields in the sysattachment table. We'll use the table name from our previous response body, and we'll take the sysid of the same record in the response body. Now we just need to give a file name. Let's use the same name as the file we're about to upload. Here's an important detail we need to specify the file's MIME type in the request format header so the system knows what kind of file it is and can tell any future downloads what to expect. Now, real quick, MIME stands for Multipurpose Internet Mail Extension. It's a way to tell the system about the type of content we're exchanging. We saw some of this with JSON and XML earlier, and there are plenty of resources on the internet if you want to learn more about MIME types. Now, down in the Request Body section, we're going to use the Binary tab to select our file, click Send, and click OK. Once again, we get a 201 created, telling us that the record was successfully uploaded, and we can see all sorts of great details in the Response Body. Back over on the Communication Devices table, let's take a look at that record and see if it has an attached PDF. And there it is. As noted before, there are many built-in REST APIs available to you on the system. 
Use the REST API Explorer to learn and understand them before implementing them in ServiceNow or a third-party system. In the next video, we'll go beyond the built-in APIs and create a custom inbound API known as a scripted REST API to allow you full control over the input parameters, the processing, and the response. Let's have a look.